but there'll be light. All right, we're talking about the uh, National Defense Authorization Act here in the U.S. Government defies federal judge on NDAA as it's called. Okay, now Fourth District Judge Catherine Forrest, she's a genuine American hero. This is where the Constitution comes in. Checks and balances. The executive is out of control. Congress, the Houses, the Senate, you know, they don't know, they don't care, right? They're ignorant. We're rushing. The terrorists don't have to do anything. They have already won. The U.S. government under Obama is destroying the Constitution, totally in violation of his oath to office. Destroying it, cutting it. The First Amendment fall out the bloody window. No rights, no trial by jury anymore. Can't face your accuser. Done in secret. Secret police. We're becoming a police state. Judge Catherine Forrest is the one with the finger in her dike, in the dike. That old Dutch story. Okay, saved the community from disaster. So we're still waiting to find out. What she did was she ruled part of the uh, authorization illegal. Okay, the part that says indefinite suspected, suspected terrorists can be held, no, can be detained indefinitely. In other words, internment without trial. Forget about your rights. You ain't got them no more. Not if this woman, if this doesn't succeed. We are up shit creek without a paddle. There go our rights. We're living in an authoritarian state. Authoritarian state means that you just listen to the folks in the government. They'll decide for us, the people in the castle, the people in the big house, you know. They'll do all thinking for us. We don't have to worry about it. It's all grand now. Obama, he's a grand man entirely. He's doing all, all thinking for us because he knows best. He's Papa. Patronizing motherfucker, a constitutional scholar. He had the words he didn't and he doesn't have the meaning, okay? Talk the talk, but he ain't walking the walk. That makes him a bloody hypocrite. When you pollute language, mister, they do have meaning, words do, like you said, and you are polluting them, and you have to pay, and you will, but the grace, mercy, and goodness of God you have to answer to, like all of us, polluting the word. Better off keeping your mouth shut. Okay. The tyrannical U.S. government is what is being described. And it is tyranny. The Constitution wants to defend us against tyranny. You want somebody dropping a dime on you and they don't like your views? Freedom of speech? This judge said indefinite detention on suspicion of terrorism puts a chilling effect on free speech. Chilling. It's been chilling since 9-11, since the overreaction, since the whole government policy was to use a sledgehammer to drive attack, and that's still the policy, using a sledgehammer to drive attack. No finest, not a scuttling clue, just intoxicated with power. Oh, we got the power now. Let us all exercise it to the worst of our abilities. Afghanistan. Right? How long have we been there? I saw a photograph there recently of a young girl. There's a uh, famine in one province. And she had her young brother. She was about 10, 11 maybe. Brother maybe 2, 3 on a donkey. Nothing in the fields. Hungry children. Hungry. The billions of dollars we spent over there and we can't even take care of hungry children there or here. And we're supposed to be doing it in the name of God and family values. It's being done in the name of fucking Satan. That's how it's being done. Evil. Satan is the name for evil. Evil is depriving people of their basic human rights and their civil liberties. That's what a constitution is supposed to be about. Protection against that. 
we have these people. I'm going to read on here. Okay. The court doesn't have the power of the sword or the purse. That was said by Jackson over a ruling. Okay. Worcester versus Georgia. So this is the problem here. The government doesn't want to obey. So she asked the question. When we are talking about cases which have used the phrase, quote, substantially supported, and said that that is a valid criterion under the AUMF or our of the legislation, that's not the same thing as saying that any court has found one way or the other that, quote, substantially supported has an understandable meaning to an ordinary citizen. And of course it doesn't. But I'll break it down for the ordinary citizen. That's what's happening. Okay. The government. It's true that the courts have, not, have not expressly ruled that. That's right. The court. Give me an example. Tell me what it means to substantially support associated forces. Government. I'm not in a position to give specific examples. The court. Give me one. Government. I'm not in a position to give one specific example. Generalized language. Nothing specific. So you can pick up anybody. You don't need much to go on it. Oh, I got the piece of paper. Now it's the dragnet. A draconian measure. Depriving us of our rights. That's what we were supposed to be protecting ourselves from the terrorists. Not giving in to them. Idiocy. Obama's a bloody schoolboy. So is Cameron. They're all for the investor class. We must restore confidence in the investor class. Take your investor class and shovel up your dumb fucking asses. It's for the people. We the people. All of us. Not an elite group. Not motherfuckers who acquired wealth. God alone knows how they acquired it. Most of it isn't acquired honestly. And then there come along and for profit putting profit before prophecy. Okay, we're going after the wrong profit. P-R-O-F-I-T, that is golden calf capitalism. And that is the irony of all these God-fearing family people and they come along. And then with the Catholic Church, the Pope was over here recently and he spoke about the idolatry of the love of money. The idolatry of the love of capital. The idolatry, making it into an idol and worshiping the fucking thing. You're a bunch of sick fucks with your investor class and putting profit before prophecy. And you're claiming to be Americans. You're no nothing, nativist, truculent, bloviating, barbaric demagogues. Otherwise known as dickhead motherfuckers, fickle bitches, and that's for obtuseness of spirit. That's what Oedipus did to his mama Yocasta. That's how fucking ignorant she are. Destroying our constitutional democratic republic in the name of protecting it against terrorists, and you being the motherfucking terrorist destroying it. The court. Assume you are just an American citizen and you're reading the statute and you wanted to make sure you do not run afoul of it because you are a diligent, you a citizen, wanting to stay on the right side of this 1021, and you read the phrase directly supported, what does that mean to you? Again, it has to be taken in the context of armed conflict informed by the laws of war. Okay. Quote, tell me what that means to the government. Official, right? The government. I cannot offer a specific example. I don't have a specific example. That was the answer. But I have lovely language where we can take power. We can have absolute fucking power because we have an opportunity and we're corrupt human beings and power corrupts and absolute power tends to corrupt absolutely, said by a British statesman, Lord Acton. And that's the phenomenon occurring here. That phenomenon is recurring and has been described by Socrates in his allegory of the cave. Pathetic ignorance. People, what does that mean? People with their heads so far up their asses they can't see for shit, badly in need of catharsis. Okay? That's the problem. Ignorant people. Oh, we love God and we love country. And you don't know what the fuck it means. All right, you're speaking polluted language of the marketplace. This 
is a writer. This is the wordsmith who knows the meaning of words and has poetry and scholarship. And we have to live in fear of idiots in this country, bureaucrats, the Central Intelligence Agency, where intelligence is centralized, mind you know. You know, can't you go in there and if you're short of intelligence, can't you make a withdrawal? And if you have too much, you can put some in. And by God, we have to put a lot in there. They can't tell the difference between farmers and terrorists. And citizens and terrorists can't tell the scuttling difference. Power corrupts. And the papers, the media, no outrage. A few here and there. Oh, you've taken away our rights. You think I'm kidding? There are a few scholars out there. One of them is Jonathan Turley, and I'm going to read from him shortly. But first, what did we say we were going to do? Substantially support associated forces. Okay, and what was the other thing that she said here? Let me get this here now. Yeah, the phrase directly supported, substantially supported. You know what it means? I come from one of the old countries, Ireland. Grew up tail end of landlordism. And it was all authoritarianism. And I read something recently over there about police action in Northeast Ireland. And the sergeant was talking about he had a reliable witness on members of, oh, of somebody in the IRA, right? His reliable witness was an informer. Good background. He knew him well, knew the family. So he was a reliable witness. You didn't have to worry about his testimony. You had the word of the sergeant himself. And you don't need any evidence beyond that. Just a fi the word of a figure in authority. Now isn't that grand? No trial by your peers. No jury to judge you. Just a figure of authority. That's what Obama is setting up. Authoritarianism. And that results in totalitarianism. We have secret police already in this country. They can come into our homes, take our stuff. What about the Fourth Amendment? Gone. And nobody cares. Hardly anybody. No protection from that. Scholars, that's what this case was about. Journalists are afraid to speak. Scholars are afraid to speak. You have to have the approval of the government now. If you don't say the right thing in front of the government, the people in authority, you know, if they don't approve, they can come along and pick you up and take you away. Internment without trial. Isn't that lovely? What about our Constitution and Bill of Rights? Antichrist, anti-Constitution, anti-Bill of Rights. And that's God's honest truth. And those motherfuckers up there with their millions of dollars and their propaganda distorting it and trying to present it otherwise. This is the worst distortion coming up. I'm going to read on how it came down. So the government couldn't offer any specific examples. So she granted, oh here's what she, here's where she said it. After seeing the ridiculous responses the government had given her and finding that even the government could not define those terms, Judge Catherine Forrest issued her ruling against the NDAA stating, this measure has a chilling impact on First Amendment rights. Freedom of speech, first and foremost. Afraid to speak in our own country. That is what the terrorists were trying to bring about. And that is what we are now living with. We have to be afraid of our own government. But we can still vote them out. There is still hope and get it turned around. We do have the power to vote. I don't know how much longer we'll have it the way it's going. This is what this judge, this good judge said. She granted her temporary injunction and said, as set forth above, this court has found that plaintiffs have shown a likelihood of success on the merits regarding their constitutional claim, and it therefore has a responsibility to ensure that the public's constitutional rights are protected. Accordingly, this court finds that the public interest is best served by the issuance of, a, of the preliminary relief recited herein. Okay, so what that means is that the people who brought the case, they were right on the merits of it and the government was wrong. Their freedom of speech was being denied. And that's what that government is trying to do for American citizens. Okay? We don't have right to a fair trial anymore. Somebody can come along and say, oh, that one's a terrorist. I don't like what he's saying. He's talking against the government. 
you know? Like me, for example. Coming along at the likes of me first. Right, CIA and FBI boys. Good furry, good furry, picking up an old bard who has poetry and allegories and scholarship and a storyteller. Instead of going out the terrorists, you dumb fucks, you're picking up good American citizens and trying to take over control of the bloody country because you're intoxicated with power and you don't give a shit about America. It's the fucking investor class. The military industrial complex is there for the investor class and the rest of us are paying for it. And it's been taken from poor people to give to rich people because they're gluttonous with power, intoxicated with their own bloody egos and they have no time for God in their lives. They laugh up their sleeves at the fools and they use it. Uh, who's going to have the last laugh? It ain't those fools. Wisdom will triumph. We're going to continue on here trying to reclaim our constitutional democratic republic. Okay. Journalist says here, just when you want to believe there are good people in the highest levels of our federal government, statements like this bring you back to reality. The government continued. Although the order fails to comply with federal law, says P-58, and the concluding paragraph of the order is not on its face, clear as to whom the injunction benefits, the government reads it in light of the well-established principle that courts neither want nor need to provide relief to non-parties when a narrower remedy will fully protect the litigants. Excuse me, let's very quickly compare Federal District Judge Catherine Forrest order. Accordingly, this court finds that the public interest is best served by the issuance to all the preliminary relief recited herein. We'll break it down. Hang in there. We're breaking it down. The government construes this court's orders applying only as to the named plaintiffs in this suit. The named plaintiffs. They brought a suit. Class action, I believe. But it was about free speech, the right to speak in our own country and not be afraid of the government. Big Brother looking over our shoulders. We are in the time of Big Brother. Ever since 9-11, the people rushed to take away the rights of the American citizens to defend them. We have to destroy your rights so we can defend them. And by God, I'm she great now. Is that military intelligence? And did you get your intelligence from the Central Intelligence Agency? Did you go there for your deposits or your withdrawals, I mean? Huh? <laughs> Idiocy. Intelligence. My God, it's the lack of it. You'd drive a man to drink, you would. Unfortunately, I got a smoke instead. It's much better for me. This kind. It is related. Drug war. We're fighting a drug war. There it is again. We can't grow marijuana in our own country. It's an herb. A plant. Farming. Nope. They ain't farmers. Hey, that's from Mexico. You know those Mexicans. They're enjoying themselves too much. We can't have them in this country but that marijuana. Shit, next thing you know is you'll find Irish people and other people finding out it's good for them too. And it helps them with the drink. And God knows they help it, need help with the drink. An answer to a prayer, as a matter of fact. An exit drug. Oh, we'll have none of that around here, no. It's only an entrance drug. Never an exit drug for anything. We, we, we don't want to hear any evidence about that, no. That's why we have a drug war. And that's why we have so many people being killed along the border between the U.S. and Mexico and all those poor old misfortunes who were caught up being killed because of money when we could grow something right here. And on board, board you'll find the farmer with the plants explaining that you plant a seed in the ground and you can get the seed in there with a shovel you know make a little gap there just open up the bit of earth push the seed down there you go mother nature does the rest and then through trial and error we find out what's good for us and we have a right to find out for ourselves we don't need big brother telling us what we can put on our mouths or in our pipes what i put in my pipe and smoke is my business not put that in your pipe and smoke that that's freedom that's a right 
I don't need ignorant motherfuckers telling me this or that. You see? I'll decide for myself what's inspiration and what works for me. Speaking of inspiration. All right. So we're in a situation right now. We're right on the edge. We're gonna go over. And by the grace, mercy, and goodness of God, and there's a shamrock for you. We're gonna be saved. So how that happens. So now, here we go. I want to go down a little bit further. So that was it. The government construes this court's orders applying only as to the named plaintiffs in this suit. Just that I think it was about six people who brought the suit. Only those six. Not to the public at large, even though the judge said public interest. Going back to Jefferson, general welfare. We the people. Now it's screw the people. It's we the government. And the people are here to serve the government instead of the government being here to serve the people. And this is all happening, or happened under Bush and continued with Obama who followed Bush's policies. This is why it's happening. And why is he doing it now? Because he wants to be re-elected. He don't give a shit about the Constitution. All his fancy talk, he was just paying lip service what he would say. That if it came down to being re-elected and doing the right thing, he would do the right thing. Well, the hell he did. He sold the country down the, down the drain to be re-elected. That's why. So he can go back in there again and be the schoolboy. Okay, for the plutocrats. He got seduced easily. Didn't he? All that power and wealth. Oh, yes, sir. Just went to your head just like that, huh? It's devious. This statement right here, the government construes this court's order as applying only as to the named plaintiffs in this suit. You can see them around, Smitten. We figured our way around the law. We figured around the spirit of the law. We are going to go with the letter of the law. You see, because we are the authorities and we want to have absolute power. We all don't want to go through trial and jury. We don't have time for that. We want action. Now. Okay. Government to should say you're guilty. Go get him. That's what it's going to be. I don't like that one over there. He's a big mouth. Well, uh, you know who's talking now, right? So, let them shut it. I ain't scared one bit of those dumb fucks. I walked the road. Got integrity. Poem. On integrity. Ain't no given nor taken on integrity. Only in. Okay. So we got the plantation mentality going. And Obama is now running the plantation for the man. That's right. And Bloomberg is the run of the plantation in New York City, and Kelly is his man there. Right. So that makes Kelly an old house nigger. To Bloomberg, the plantation owner. And it makes Obama a house paddy nigger to the owners of the plantations in this country. That's who he's running it for. Taking away our rights. No, you ain't, motherfucker. You ain't gonna get up there and use your words and use your fucking PR, drink your pint of Guinness in the corner with the boys like a regular guy. Yeah, to bullshit us and take away our rights? Go take a flying fuck in the rolling donut for yourself, mister. We know a tree by the fruit it bears. We know lies and deceit and propaganda. This bar does. You won't pollute language around me, you dumb shits. All right, trying to reclaim our Constitution. Okay, so this link, this is from Real News Reporter, and this link will be up with this video, and uh, or else Barbart on barbart.com. I'm going to figure that out. So <clears throat> next we're going to get into um, the scholar Jonathan Turley, and give you some facts behind this. This guy, he's been on Keith Overman, 
and they had some of the best discussions about the Constitution, about the Constitution of the Democratic Republic, and what it really means. Freedom for the people, of the people, by the people. But the people got to get their heads out of their asses. Okay? Recognize a farmer from a terrorist? Hello! Recognize a poet and a bard from a terrorist? And a scholar? And a reporter? And freedom of speech? From an illegitimate government? And an abuse of power? Hello! Okay. Let me see here. Uh, go to bookmark, see if I can get that recently bookmarked. Government, rediscover, key image, key, this week in poverty. Jonathan Turley. Ten reasons the U.S. is no longer land of the free. Here we go. I think I got it. Yep, coming up, coming up. Time for a smoke. In the meantime, while we're thinking of John, looking at this, ten reasons. Got it right here. All right, here we are. The State Department issues reports on individual rights in other countries monitoring the passage of restrictive laws and regulations around the world. Iran, for example, has been criticized for denying fair public trials and limiting privacy, while Russia has been taken to task for undermining due process. Other countries have been condemned for the use of secret evidence and torture. Secret evidence and torture. Here we go. Okay, even as we pass judgment on countries we consider unfree, Americans remain confident that any definition of a free nation must include their own, the land of the free. Yet the laws and practices of the land should shake that confidence. In the decades since September 11, 2011, this country has comprehensively reduced civil liberties in the name of an expanded security state, emerging police state, state totalitarianism. Only government officials know what's going on and know what's best for us all. Aren't we all so privileged? So, here we go now. Expanded security state. The most recent example of this was the National Defense Authorization Act signed December 31st, which allows for the indefinite detention of citizens. Internment without trial. At what point does the reduction of individual rights in our country change how we define ourselves? Okay, while each new national security power Washington has embraced, Washington has embraced was controversial when enacted, they are often discussed in isolation, but they don't operate in isolation. They form a mosaic of powers under which our country could be considered at least in part authoritarian. Not just at least in part. Americans often proclaim our nation as a symbol of freedom to the world while dismissing nations such as Cuba and China as categorically unfree. Yet, objectively, we may only be only half right. Those countries do lack basic individual rights, such as due process, placing them outside any reasonable definition of free. But the United States now has much more in common with such regi regimes than anyone may like to admit. Much in common with Russia and Cuba and totalitarian regimes. That's right. Those countries also have constitutions that purport to guarantee freedoms and rights. But their governments have broad discretion in denying those rights and few real avenues for challenges by citizens. Precisely the problem with the new laws in this country. Precisely the problem. Now, like Russia, the government has the right to decide whether you have those rights or not. They're not basic rights anymore. No more fundamental rights because they're guaranteed, you know, with our Bill of Rights. No, sir. The government will define it. Whatever asshole in there, some fucking bureaucrat will decide what he likes and doesn't like. And we're supposed to live with that shit. And we are voting these people in. Voting away our own freedoms. Aiding in our own oppression. Bunch of dumb asses. God almighty. Told you you'd drive him out to drink, he would. Ah, thanks be to God, I don't like much anymore. A little bit here and there for poetry, like now. Otherwise, take it easy. It catches up with you real quick. Tough thing to deal with. Assassination of U.S. citizens. No problem. Remember, we're a war. 
So, we must take away all the rights of all the citizens, even though it's overseas. And even though the citizens became aware and the, just the bombing itself woke people up and said, Oop, what the fuck is going on here? we got to keep our eyes and ears peeled. Okay? We're all naive and isolated. Government doesn't trust the people. None of us. Don't trust each other. Everything gets out of control. President Obama has claimed as President George W. Bush did before him the right to order the killing of any citizen considered a terrorist or an abettor of terrorism. How do you know the person is a terrorist? That's what the right to a trial is about. Evidence. So you don't take the life of an innocent person. Don't care about innocence here. Get them all. That'll take care of the problem. That's the attitude. We're going for mass incarceration. We're going for internment without trial. Give this guy four more years. Give these people four more years. The least cut of the thing. Look at what they're doing right now. Going against the judiciary. Going against the spirit of the law. Greedy for power. Grasping at it. Indefinite detention. Under the law signed last month, terrorism suspects. How do you know they're a terrorist? So doesn't the government know? Don't they have the Central Intelligence Agency and the FBI to tell them? Right, all they have to do is go to the Central Intelligence Agency and they have the intelligence there. They have software and everything to know what a terrorist is and what an innocent citizen is. No need of a trial or anything else like that. And it can all be done secretly. They don't disturb anybody, you know. Keep it on the quiet. No, no wink and a nod. From the boys up in the castle there, the people in the big house. That's what we have to listen to. Right on. Okay, the administration continues to claim the right to strip citizens of legal protections based on its sole discretion. China recently codified a more limited detention law for its citizens, while countries such as Cambodia have been singled out by the United States for prolonged detention. And there's the hypocrisy of Obama and Cameron getting up there condemning people like Mubarak in Egypt and your man Assad in Syria, you know? Motherfuckers, you're taking away rights in your own countries. You don't trust your own people. And you're doing it for the investor class. You're not doing it for the people. You're liars and hypocrites when you say that. We know your behavior. We know a tree by the fruit it bears. When you're taking away support systems for the tiny Thames, and I have poetry in all this. It's up on barbart.com. Just go through it. There's a poem there, Awareness. You can check it out through my tweets as well. All right, but they are taking away the, t the support services for the tiny Thames and giving more money to the people who don't need it and who already rob people blind and don't earn that kind of money honestly. They only think they do. And, they don't, and they're greedy, they want to pay taxes. A fair share. Should go back to the tax rate under Eisenhower. Country was doing good then. A Republican. Those tax rates. Pay back to the country where you got it. Pay back to the infrastructure that made it possible for you to get your wealth. It isn't all yours. Okay? Pay back the dues. The university system that, like uh, your man there with Apple, Steve Jobs. He got the information that, it, that that knowledge was passed down down through centuries in the university system. Culminating in that and he came along and took credit for the whole bloody thing. And it's a crazy fucking system just for the investors. It's bullshit. We need a plan for all the people. We, the people, not just a handful of fucking assholes who think they're gods and all they are are bloody assholes for thinking that. Arbitrary justice. The president now decides whether a person will receive a trial in the federal courts or in a military tribunal. The president decides that or he's lackeys. A system that has been ridiculed around the world for lacking due process protections. 
dear, our protection's gone. And he's getting up there saying he's protecting us. From whom? From a bunch of poor bloody people halfway around the world? That we had no right being in their countries to begin with? We were only there for the investor class and the military industrial complex, which isn't for the people. Eisenhower was right when he warned about the military industrial complex. Because he understood power corrupts. The founding fathers didn't want a standing army. Can you imagine the military? This is where John McCain and these fucking idiots want to take us. Oh, this is all out war. We have to be in full alert. Right, give up your rights and all become militarized and the army will decide who can speak and who can't. And the police authorities. Idiocy. Arbitrary justice. The president, can, we don't have rights now. The president will decide for us. Because he can't make mistakes to Mr. President. He's such a good guy, a nice guy. Yeah, now, he allows us. Poor people, us peons. Us poor old niggers on the plantation. He's looking out for us now. That's right. Us petty niggers, kikes, redskins, wetbacks, coolies, wop. Wops. That's right. That's who he's looking out for. Well, this is old Paddy, nigger, kike, redskin, wetback, coolie wop right here. All right, speaking for the crazy serpent boys and girls who've been through that because that's the old background of this Paddy, you see. So I knows what I'm talking about now. I does, so I does. And I guts myself the poetry to prove it. If you don't like it, go take a fly and fucking a roll and doing it for yourself. We're talking about children, hungry and sick. Families who are hungry and sick. And there's the hypocrisy. God and families. Oh, yeah, for my family. Fuck the rest of you. You know, and then, oh, we're all won the lottery if we're doing well. You know, and you know, the poor people. Oh, they have such a good support system. Yes, yes. Oh, the bullshit they believe. You know, and they're closing the door on Christ every day. Yeah, and they want their prophets. They don't want prophecy. They want prophets. Okay. Secret evidence. So we have, what have we got so far of the ten he said? Assassination of U.S. citizens, <clears throat> indefinite detention, arbitrary justice, and now we have warrantless searches. Right. The president may now order warrantless sur surveillance, surveillance including a new capability to force companies and organizations to turn over information on citizens' finances, communications, and associations. Secret police. No checks and balances. No need for them. Sure, isn't Obama and Paul? Isn't he a lovely fella? We can trust him, you know. He's such a good president. And it doesn't matter if the executive accumulates all of this power. Sure, it's no problem. The president isn't capable of being corrupted and being a corrupt person or politician. Could not be a corrupt politician and just loves the power of it and will sell the country down the drain. Impossible. And that's what's happening. Okay, warrantless searches. Secret evidence. Oh, go back to warrantless searches. That was the Patriot Act under Bush. Okay, Bush acquired a sweeping power under the Patriot Act in 2001 and 2011. Obama extended the power, including searches of everything from business documents to library records. To hell with you, free speech. The government can use, quote, national security letters to demand without probable cause that organizations turn over information on citizens and all of them not to reveal the disclosure to the affected party. Saudi Arabia and Pakistan operate under laws that allow the government to engage in widespread discretionary surveillance. National security. Okay, so they can obtain information and all of the people not to reveal what's going on. So you don't have a right to face your accuser. You've got a secret accusing government who has the power and you don't. And they have the discretion to use it. Don't you love the language, the total corruption, the pollution of language of the word? Secret evidence. The government now routinely uses secret evidence to detain individuals and employs secret evidence in federal and military courts. That's secret police. That's a police state in secret, when you do it in secret. We have that happening right now. Okay? 
they use secret evidence. It also forces the dismissal of cases against the United States by simply filing declarations that the cases would make the government reveal classified information that would harm national security, a claim made in a variety of privacy lawsuits and largely accepted by federal judges without question, even legal opinions cited as the basis for the government's actions under the Bush and Obama administrations have been classified. This allows the government to claim secret legal arguments to support secret proceedings using secret evidence. Secret, secret, secret. And he was all about transparency. Okay, transparency, transparency. Open government. More hypocrisy. We know a tree by the fruit it bears. Okay. War crimes. Okay, let me finish up here with secret evidence. Routinely deny country. In addition, some cases never make it to court at all. The federal courts routinely deny constitutional challenges to policies and programs under a narrow definition of standing to bring a case. People in the judiciary who do this are cowards. They can look at the words and yet they don't know the meaning and they will kowtow to a government official, to the legal, to the Justice Department's interpretation. Oh, this is what we think it is, boys. That, oh, that's grand. So, fine. So, now we have the official version, do we? As long as we have the official version, now we know what to do because we have a system of patronage. And we don't want to rock the boat. It's the old totem pole, you know. You kiss up and you kick down. That's what you do. And that's human nature regardless of the group. All right. Black, white, brown, red, yellow, male, female, gay, straight. Doesn't matter. Religion, ethnicity. It's all the totem pole. People say it's class first and foremost. No, it's not. It's the totem pole. Kiss up and kiss... Kiss up and kick down. There, that explains human behavior for you. But we can be free of it. That's the human journey. Okay? But we're talking about perversity. This here, the secret government, secret evidence, secret police. All right? That is evil. That is anti-Christ. It is done in darkness. They refuse to let the light of day in there, and that is what they are trying to do, and we are trying to shine the light on that. Immunity from judicial review. You can't win. They got everything tied up whichever way you go. Continuing monitoring of citizens. Continual monitoring of citizens. Extraordinary renditions. And then lies about it. And lies and people believe the lie. And we have to do it. And the O'Reilly's. The way they can justify. Why is O'Reilly so concerned? His money. His love of money, old Scrooge. That's why we have it. This is all about love of evil. Love of money is the root of all evil. Said by Paul, an apostle, as he was known in the literature that we know as the New Testament. Love of money is the root of all evil. Love of money is the root of all evil behind abortion because families don't want to have children when they can't feed them. And there's the hypocrisy of the right to life movement and all the so-called social conservatives. Oh, we are blind to cheap labor and to the destruction of families there because we want our profits, but we are righteous. Oh, we love the children. Yeah. Before they're born, and as soon as they're born, they're cheap labor for big business, you sick fucks. We're in sad shape in this culture. Sad shape. Extraordinary rendition. Listen to the language. Extraordinary. Kidnapping people. No trial, no jury. Shipping them off in secret again. Darkness. No light to be shed. Cheney, always in darkness. Oh, Twisted Dick Cheney. Boy, he's twisted. Twisted Dick is right. Motherfucker. He's a dickhead motherfucker. All in the name of freedom. Sick people, man, I tell you. Syria, Saudi Arabia, Egypt and Pakistan. Torture. Pure bloody torture being done in the name to against terrorism. We become worse than the people we were fighting against. All right, let's see what else he's got here. Extraordinary rendition. So he just goes on. 
Dishonesty from politicians is nothing new for Americans. The real question is whether we are aligned to ourselves when we call this country the land of the free. Jonathan Tolley is the Shapiro Professor of Public Interest Law at George Washington University. Like I said, an excellent scholar. A humble man. Seen him on TV with uh, Keith Overman many a time, like I said, and those guys had good discussions. And Keith was kicking it about what I'm kicking it about now, too. Our freedom's being taken away in the name of protecting freedom. Idiocy. Okay. Kind of a poem we'll leave you with here now. Oh, we gave a poem already. We'll take a break. That's it for now. Time for a smoke break. Have a few sips. Get this up there. Barbart, out. <laughs>